Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. Jill here with Go English Coach. Today we've got class three, our advanced in our advanced grammar one series. Um, starting a little bit later today, just getting a little bit of uh stuff copied and things ready for you guys here. So the things that I would like to cover today, this is always just like my general you know, outline of the class and what I intend to do. And sometimes my teaching goes like this because that's just how it is. Um, and anyway, so we're gonna start with this activity here on the board. I'm calling it a spelling exercise. Next, I have some work with um, in the book. So I'll move over to the desk at that time. I would love to wrap up our unit on the present tense and present progressive because I think you guys are moving nice and quickly with this. And then finally, I would like to start working on some writing. Um, and so I, you know, in my opinion, you know, working with, uh, you know, being a student of anything, but especially a language, there's a lot of information that like comes in. And so we also need to have this pushing out. And so the pieces that come in are listening, right? and reading. Those are things that we take in information. And then the ways that we go out are obviously writing and speaking. So uh, if you think about learning a language in those terms, think about like when a child learns its first language, they can always understand a lot more than they can express. So Part of the like unfair part of learning a language is that, well, maybe it's not unfair, but if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Like information coming in, there's more information coming in and less going out. A baby, if you say no, they know to stop that, right? Maybe they don't listen, but in general, you know, children who are learning their first language can understand a lot more than they can express. And that is the same in most cases with adults as well. Um, so we really have to push or create a situation for you that you are kind of forced to do it, right? So if you're, if we use the example of the child learning its first language, it's the same thing. The child will eventually need things, right? So as a baby, they express by just crying. And then because their needs are very small, right? They usually just need uh, to go to bed, they need to eat, and they need to have a diaper change, right? As they get older, their needs become more specific. And so the they can't just cry anymore. They need words to express. I want more banana or I'm still thirsty, right? And so then they start, the need for them to express increases. And so then their brain allows them to, to obtain and, and use then, they're forced to use and to, to absorb the language and then to use it, okay? So we have to kind of create a similar scenario for adult learners or people who are learning. So, so language learning for your first language is like that. Um, for your second or third or whatever English is to you, we have to create scenarios or opportunities for you to take what you have learned and use it. Okay. So that's, that's my goal here. So there's a portion of every class that is coming in, right? It's the information that I'm giving you. And then there is, a, you know, there is work on your part that needs to be done for, for the full cycle of teaching and learning to happen. So that means that when I ask for you guys to do some work, I would love for you to get it done. And it's not because I want you to just work hard. It's because I want this to be successful for you. Okay. I want you to learn and reach your goals. Okay. And so while speaking and writing can often be a challenge or scary or, you get nervous. Um, I totally understand. And that is very, very normal. Um, but that's the great thing about this is that we're, you know, in a safe place together and we can, um, I can help correct. Okay. So coming to these classes live, I mean, this is great if you guys are watching on the replay, but coming to the classes live is really going to be the best way to go about this. Okay. All right. 
let's jump in. All of that has been said. <laughs> okay, so what I have on the board behind me are 18 verbs. I've got three categories in each with each verb. So we've got the base verb. I've got the simple present third person, okay? Because in the simple present, we don't really change much except in that third person. And then I've got the participle category. Does that make sense? The participle is the ing form. And the reason that we call it the participle is because it's not the full verb, right? The full verb is the form of to be plus the participle, which is just the ing, okay? Lots of very in, important words here. <laughs> okay, so um, I've got my three different colors here and I'm gonna just be flopping back and forth here. So let's start with our first one. The verb is answer, answer. That's the base form of the verb, okay? Um, let's just go down the list here. So then I just am using one color. <laughs> if my uh simple present third person is asks that one's a very tricky one to say you guys should practice that because you've got asks asks uh, it's it's s k s at the end and that could be very tricky for people it's it's tricky for native speakers just so you know so the base form of this we're going to put here is ask simply ask okay so we're kind of working backwards to work into what the base is okay so the participle here is coming, C-O-M-I-N-G. What is our base? So we're practicing working backwards to find out what the base is and then also the spelling, making sure that we're getting the spelling correct. Coming, okay, so I didn't write this very well here. C-O-M-I-N-G. Let's just write that a little bit better. Okay. So the base form of that verb is come, C-O-M-E, with that silent E at the end. So then remember the rule about verbs with the silent E at the end. When you make it into the participle form, you drop the E and you add I-N-G, okay? Okay, so this uh, simple present third person of this, the pronunciation is does, okay? The verb is do. All right, we've got eat, so that one's already done for us. The participle of this verb is employing, employing. So you guys in this advanced class get a little higher level verbs here. So to employ is like to hire somebody. So if you say I employ two other teachers, that means I'm the boss and I gave a job to those people. I employ them, okay? Flying for the participle here, the verb is fly. And then we've got forget. We've got a lot of them in this base column here. So we've got has in this, uh, the, the third person's uh, simple present. Oh my gosh. The verb is have. This is one of those irregular ones. So some of the other very common irregular ones are like do and go, right? So for go, we say goes, and for do, we say does. Remember the pronunciation of those. Goes and does, okay? If you haven't um, taken a look at my pronunciation course, that's a really helpful thing when we start talking about the International Phonetic Alphabet. I use it a lot in all of my classes. So um, getting a head start or a jump start on that and getting really um, dialed with that is is super helpful in all of your language learning okay let's look at 12 here the participle is lying okay lying look what happened here that's the verb to lie it means to not tell the truth okay to lie and then it changes to l y i n g again that'll happen down here so keep pay attention to what's happening here okay the simple present third person of this verb is says. Again, with the pronunciation there is eh. Says, not says, it's says. That's the pronunciation. Okay, 
The verb in the base form is say. And then the final one here, this participle is controlling. It's got the double L there. So what do you guys think? Control. Do you think it has two L's at the end or just one? Just the one. Okay, so it's got that CVC. Remember that rule that we talked about last week? CVC at the end, the consonant, vowel, consonant. And so we double that one. Okay, so I'm going to er erase this because it's getting kind of in our way here. All right, let's grab the blue marker and we're going to go through the third person singular in the simple present. Okay, so our base verb here is answer. Our simple present third person is simply answers. Okay, answers. Okay, by goes to, ooh, not that spelling. Buys, what are we doing here? Comes, so z sound here, does, we already got that one. Eat goes to, eats, okay, employ. Nothing tricky here, just simply employs. What happens here? Fly, it has a Y at the end. So we're gonna change that to uh, Y goes to I E S. Okay. The CVC, remember, we're gonna double final consonant. Okay. Forget goes to forgets. Okay, forgets. All right, let's keep going on this second part here. Hurry has a Y, so we're going to employ this one here. Hurries, I-E-S. Lie goes to lies, right? He lies all the time, okay? <laughs> open goes to opens. Rain goes to rains. Reach. This one isn't irregular, right? So if it's got CH, SH, X, or Z, what happens there? We use ES, right? Yes, um, or S. Okay, so reach, reaches. So we've got, instead of just S, we use the ES, and the pronunciation is a little different. So reigns, Ns, reaches, reaches. Okay, so it's, you can actually hear that there's a I in the middle there. Reaches. Okay, tie goes to ties and control controls. Okay, so we've got a couple of our little notes over here just to kind of help you guys remember. All right, let's finish this part up and do the green part. So we're doing the participle, the I-N-G participle, okay? So this is where we're gonna add the I-N-G, okay? So, and remember, the full verb contains is coming, it is raining, I am controlling, okay? Those, that's the full part. That's why this is just the participle. So don't, you know, don't forget you guys when you are using this verb to include the form of to be. That's a critical, critical part of this, um, of this tense, the, the present progressive, okay? And a lot of people um, don't use it. All right, so answer is going to be answering. Asks, asking. Buys, buying, okay, I am buying a new house. Um, do, does, and then doing. So just simply adding ing onto there. We've got employing, flying, um, okay, and then we've got forgetting. Okay, we, we don't use this a lot, um, but let's keep going. Have goes to having, so we're going to drop that ing, or excuse me, we're going to drop the e and add ing, okay? Hurry, 
hurrying. What are we going to do here? Hurrying. I am hurrying. I'm moving quickly. Okay. I'm hurrying. Opening. Nope. No two ends there. That does not look right. So sometimes, you know, there's so much, um, there are so many just rules and then exceptions in English. Sometimes I will say many times, um, people make spelling mistakes in English. It's raining today. It's raining. She is reaching to get her jacket or whatever. She is, it is saying, maybe I'm talking about my computer. It is saying that the weather is going to be cold today. It is saying, okay tying tying so remember from above i am tying my shoes and then the final one is controlling with that double l okay wonderful so if you guys want to take a minute and take a little screenshot of that that might not be a bad idea and then we are going to move over here to the desk and do um an exercise on paper here together. Okay, great. Hi, everybody. It's nice to be up and close with you. Okay, so here's what we've got. Um, this is from my Focus on Grammar book. So giving all credit to that. And then actually, while we're sitting here, this is another book that I really like, and it well, it goes really well with um, teaching grammar. It's called Great Writing, and it's by the National Geographic Learning and Sun Gauge Learning. And um, also, one other book that I wanted to share with you guys. This, I think this works really well. It's a reference guide, so it's not really like, it doesn't really have a whole lot of um, activities, but um, I think that these are just awesome. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. So it's got like these charts, you know, where it's just very clearly, there's not a lot of text and it's these pictures. So this is all of the simple tenses so simple present, simple past and simple future. Uh, I think this is a great representation of when we use those so the examples are it snows in alaska and then it'll give you here the meaning of it okay so and then simply in the simple past what does that mean and and when do we use it right it snowed yesterday it's a one time event that i am discussing that happened in the past and then for simple future it's um a one time thing that's happening or going to happen in the future. So you can say it will snow or it's going to snow. Okay. So that's kind of like the great, just very easy way of explaining things. Um, and the, it, I mean, it goes on with all of the tenses. So here's the progressive tenses, present, past, future progressive, the perfect tenses. So a perfect tense, um, um, for example, is when we use have. I have lived in the United States for 10 years, okay? Um, and, and then it shows the, the timelines and stuff here too. I just, I think it's so great. The perfect progressive tense is I have been living in the United States for 10 years. So it's just a little bit more of an advanced um, um tense, I guess. Um, and then we've got these summary ones and these are all, and then you've got the spellings. We have other tenses too, because we have conditional tenses and all of that. So that's really, those are in our advanced class, but. Um, okay. And actually let's just take a quick look at. Oh yeah. Those are the ones we talked about with the stative verbs. adjectives, pronunciation, gosh, yep, I love this, I love it, I love it. Um, here's another great list, and I can post this in our app here. So this is a list of the 
irregular verbs in an alphabetical list. Okay, irregular meaning, you know, when you've got the simple form is to arise. These are the past. So then once we start talking about past tense, we really have to take a look at um, the, the most common um, irregular verbs. Okay, so we'll be starting the past tense review and teaching on uh, in our next class on Thursday. Okay, so let's save that for then. All right, let's save that for then. And let's take a look at this. So we're gonna use this as the hard part here. Okay, so let's just do one more quick example or practice with this. Let's see if I can get this more looking a lot better here. Okay. Okay, so the simple and present progressive, it says complete the article, use the correct form of the verbs in parentheses, simple present or present progressive. So if you would like, I would like for you to pause this video and go ahead and get started and maybe do through 10, okay? And then we'll work on the rest together. So go ahead and pause and then fill in these, you know, you can just write on a piece of paper, one, two, three, four, all the way to 10, and then start answering the questions, okay? Using the cues in the in the paragraph to, um, to help yourself make the decision, is it in the present progressive or is it something in the simple present? Okay, how was that for you guys? Hopefully that was so easy. <laughs> okay, let's take a look. Let's do all of these together. Hopefully you did 10 on your own. That's what I really would like for you to do. Okay, so it says right now, Pam O'Neill. So this is my hint right here. Right now means in this moment is taking. So therefore, because it's in this moment, we're going to use is taking, okay? Pam O'Neill is taking a test, but she... So here's what, so negative to no, we're going to say she doesn't know it, okay? Remember, we would not use no in the progressive tense because it's a stative verb, okay? She, focus on what she write and not on how her handwriting looks. She is focusing on what she's writing, is writing, and not on how her handwriting looks. This is a state of verb, so to appear or to seem is look, okay? So we're gonna use the present tense for that. The person who will analyze that test is a graphologist, a graphologist, someone who studies, because it's something they do all the time, not is studying now. Somebody who studies handwriting, okay? And in, uh, let's see, graphologists believe, okay, hopefully you got all of these correct. I'm, I'm hoping that you're correct. Graphologists believe, so this is like a general statement. They believe in the past, they believe in the future, and they believe now. They generally believe that a person's handwriting gives an indication of his or her personality and character. Oh gosh, I wonder what a graphologist would say about my handwriting. Um, okay, these days, a number of businesses use graphologists. Handwriting sometimes convinces employers to hire one job with job applicant over another. Okay, so we've got just a couple that are in the present progressive tense. Hang on just a second here. I want to make sure that we are. Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. We are recording. Perfect. Okay. Let's continue here. Oh, I've got all kinds of stuff on me. Okay. Um, let's see. Why don't you guys pause for another minute and do here through 20. Okay. 
We are back. What exactly blank company graphologist Perry Vance hopes So we have a space here and then we've got this one here and there's no verb here, um, but it is a question. And so my guess is that they want us to use uh, is or are here and then put this in the present progressive tense, which we can do. What is company graphologist Perry Vance hoping to learn from applicants writing samples? Okay, so this is that plural possessive form. Um, what exactly is company graphologist Perry Vance hoping to learn from applicants writing samples? So we go up at the end and we say that. I always, so here, here's his quote, okay? I always, so when he says always, that means it's the present tense, simple present. I always look for clues to possible behavior. He explained, for example, the slant of the writing, like if you write, you know, like this or like this, the slant of the writing actually tells a lot. Okay, let's do so it's a question. So we're going to say, does the writing lean to the left or the right? That took me a minute to figure out what they wanted us to do there. A left slant often indicates, so here's your verb. Here's that adverb of frequency that's before the verb. In most cases it is, right? A shy personality. The position of the sample on the page is also important important. This is pretty interesting. A right hand, a right hard margin of the page represents the future. Here's a writing sample from an executive who right now is planning. And the reason I'm using that is because it says right now, Okay, right now is planning a new direction for a large company. Note it, notice that this person doesn't leave much room in the right-hand margin. This is someone who not avoid looking at the future, doesn't. avoid looking at the future. Okay. What about signatures? I asked. Yes. Signatures show, because these are just kind of general, um, his general thoughts that in general signatures show us a lot about someone. Said Vance, look at this one by a chief executive officer of a large firm. He is on the news a lot these days because the federal in government is investigating his company. Those very large strokes are typical of a person who thinks about himself first and takes advantage of other people. Vance always warns, so for me, this is present tense because it says always, warns, however, that his analysis doesn't guarantee an applicant's future job performance. So doesn't, that's the negative form of the simple present, guarantee an applicant's future job performance. It's no substitute for careful review of a complete application, okay? All right, so hopefully you've got most of those correct and good work on that. Let's see, let's do one other thing here and then we will wrap up for today. This is our review of this chapter. So then we will move into the past um, tenses on in Thursday's class, okay? 
um, our review, it says, so we've got three sections, A, B, and C. So if you need some time to pause, go ahead and do that and then circle. What we're going to do here is we're going to choose the present progressive or the present tense. Okay. So this woman's name is Ekaterina is helping, helps me with my Russian homework every weekend. So this is your indicator to tell you which one. So she's not doing it right now. If this said now, then we would choose this. But because it says every weekend, we're going to choose helps. Felix is working on a new project these days. Felix works on a new project these days. So we're going to say is working. Are, do you ever talk on your cell phone while you're driving? So this is a present tense question. The, if it's present progressive, you're going to use are. If it's um, symbol present, you're going to use do, okay? But since this is just, this is not ing, we use do. Do you ever talk on your cell phone while you're driving? Okay, so you can see that there's down here a simple present and a present progressive in the same sentence, and that's completely fine, okay? So something is happening while you're driving, and in the middle, you talk on the phone, okay? Four, I don't understanding or understand what this word's me what this word means. Can you explain it? We don't say I don't understanding. Okay. So we say I don't understand because it's a non-action verb. Okay. We usually go or we go usually to the beach. So here we're looking not at present progressive and simple present. We're looking at the placement or the location of the adverb of frequency. So which one is correct? We usually go, or we go usually to the beach for a vacation. Remember the rule with usually. Um, let's see if I can find that rule here. Um, that is actually in my other book. So let me grab that here. Okay. Here's the rules for that. Um, so with simple present, adverbs of frequency, so how often something happens, here's the rule. Adverbs of frequency usually go before the verb, okay? Here's the example. Women always kiss. This is your verb. This is the adverb of frequency, okay? In France, women often kiss. Verb, adverb of frequency. So adverbs of frequency usually go before the verb. Now, then there's an exception, right? Because there's always a rule exception in English. However, sometimes and usually can also go at the beginning of a sentence. So here's an example. I sometimes wear shorts at home or sometimes I wear shorts at home, okay? However, one more piece here. Adverbs of frequency usually go after the verb be. So the verb to be is our, the, you know, those two, if you are using those, the verb, the adverb will go after it. So she is always late, okay? She is always funny, okay? Um, she is never happy, <laughs> okay? So keep that in mind. Those are your rules. All right, good work, you guys. Um, let's do this next section okay complete the conversation with the simple present or present progressive form of the verb in parentheses so it says and we have anna and kim speaking to each other it's a conversation hi kim i blank jeff goodale is he here okay i look for or i am looking for okay I am looking for. So the verb here is actually to look for, is to search, right? It's different than look. It's to look for. Kim says, I think he's here somewhere. I think, okay? He blank carry a cell phone today. So I blank to give him a message for Lynn. He isn't. So we've got, it's a negative carrying c-a-r-r-y-i-n-g a cell phone today so i 
need to give him a message. Okay. I blank see him. I see him. Okay. He is standing next to Kevin. Jeff, hi, call Lynn. Okay, question mark. She blank is waiting for your call right now. Is waiting. That blank serious. That sounds serious. Can I use your phone? Sure. I not believe. So I don't believe in it's anything serious. She just wants you to buy a new cell phone. Okay. Great. All right, you guys, last part here, and then we're going to close for today. So this one has, it's a, it's a paragraph that has five mistakes. So let's find those mistakes. Um, so it's a little note. Hi, Lita. How do you do these days? Um, we're all fine. I'm writing to tell you that we are not living in California anymore. So we, this might be, how do you do these days is like, okay, how are you? doing we just moved to Oregon also we are expecting a baby we're looking for an interesting name for our new daughter do you have any ideas right now we're thinking about Gabriella because it it has good nicknames for example Gabby Bree and Ella all seem good to us. How are those nicknames sound to you? How do those nicknames sound to you? We hope you'll write soon and tell us your news. Love, Samantha. Okay, so we found, let's see, one, two, three, four. Did we miss one here? How do you do these days? We're all fine. I'm writing to tell you that we not living in Cal, we are how about this? We, you can say we are not living in California, or you can say we don't live. Let's say we don't live in California anymore. We just moved to Oregon. And also we are expecting a baby. We're looking for an interesting name for our new daughter. Do you have any ideas? Right now we're thinking about Gabriella, because it has good nicknames. For example, Gabi, Brie, Ella, all seem good to us. How do those nicknames sound to you? We hope you'll write soon and tell us your news. Okay, um, let's see. So for next um, class on Thursday, we will begin doing the past tense. We'll look at some of the spellings and the pronunciations for the past tense. So it's kind of a big class. And I hope that you're excited and ready for it. So um, I can't wait to see you guys there. And let's see if I can figure this out. You guys have a great rest of your day. And I can't wait to see you on Thursday. Thank you so much. Good work today.